so, and then shortly um, in regards um, to the objectives of this session um, is really um, in all of these, yeah, strange and challenging times is really to come together as, as community and um, to support one another and um, to feel that we are here together and that we listen to each other. And so also to get a better feeling where we all are at. And um, so you will see it in the course um, of the journey today. And of course, we would like to have your feedback um, on the benchmarking um, for this year. And um, just re really to, to ask the invitation or as it also was said, to feel the pulse of, of what is going on and um, to see if we can come up with some additional ideas and, and solution how we can support um, each other. And then in particular also to find out more about what your needs are uh, in, the coming, in the coming month. And then also a little bit we wanna share about um, of course what GDS is doing because also we have been looking uh, within. And um, so there is a lot of things happening that um, we will be sharing in the course of the time, but today is um, a, a start, a start um, with it. So um, going from there, um, then um, what would be nice, because we have so many faces, it would be nice if you all take a second and we ask you um, to have a recycled sheet of paper ready. And it would be great if you take that sheet and with your, with your thick pen and write down from which destination or from where you are. And then well, I, I would ask you to please hold it into the camera so that we all have a glance where we all are from. And I'm starting and I'm just doing like this. And if you just do it like this so that you can also see, of course, the others, what, where other is coming from. And then if you please would hold it into the camera as much as you can close and with sneaking with your head below. And then we'll wait because we want to have, we want to do a, a, a little, a little photo of, of all of us, of all destinations joining. So we'll wait um, until all of you are there. Okay, and we can already see, I'm just like reading out some, some places, uh, Prague, Bangkok, Iceland, Rotterdam, Brisbane, Glasgow, Geneva, Dublin, Kerry, Ireland, oh, Cork, um, and then something that I cannot read, <laughs> Cologne, uh, Spain, uh, Barcelona, over there, Bor Bordeaux, Amira, uh, so really thank you so much it's so exciting in london we also have london there and uh yeah gr really great thank you so much so thank you so much to see where where you are from and um as you all may know today is earth day and so before we dive into the into the session today i would like to take a moment um of of stopping and I would ask you everybody to leave whatever you're doing and um, maybe I would ask you to close your eyes and we just breathe a little bit because where I want to take you is because today is Earth Day I would like to um, read a little prayer for our beloved Earth yeah in reverence of Earth Day today so I would ask you to close your eyes Breathe softly and smoothly and just feel comfortable on where you are. So, a prayer for Mother Earth. All people of the earth, each and every nation, arise and rejoice at the continued creation of beauty, of springtime, the, year, the yearly rebirth of our protector, our home, our Mother Earth, who despite our apparent lack of care, creates bountiful splendor for all to share. From mountaintops to the deepest sea, 
all wonderful earthly miracles bursting free. Yet this miracle of renewal requires the helping hand of the people to replenish and renew the land. From the largest of cities to the most remote farms, to unite in spirit and with the strongest arms. Become a midwife to the birth of each flower, a guardian of our resources, hour by hour. We must learn to take time to appreciate the miracles of which we did not create. For God, the universe, has given this wonderful treasure and its prevention will be the measure of people who recognize and will celebrate the birth of each season before it's too late. In citizenship, in willingness to toil, we must bend our backs and tend to the soil. In stewardship, arise and applaud the worth of the wondrous marvel of our living earth. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for having this moment in reverence for our Mother Earth. Okay, so with this, I would like to um, pass the word to, I think that all of you know him, our beloved guy, Bigwood, and um, who will do a, a, a short presentation and um, give us an insight and inspiration about also thinking where we are and about a, a little bit feeling, letting us feel the pulse. And with this guy, I would like to invite you on the scene. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Noah. Good morning, everyone. It's a fantastic year here. It really uh, brings me a smile to my face. Um, so my talk this morning is it's called The Big Pivot, and it serves to kind of catalyze some thoughts in you, uh, which we're going to take into a discussion uh, later. And so um, have a think about what I'm presenting, the ideas I'm uh, throwing out to you whether you agree, disagree, and what you would like to add to those and, and that discussion. But how are you feeling? How's the ride in the last uh, two months been? I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been on this kind of roller coaster that's going from left to right, right, up and down. And um, it, it's, I don't know about you, but it's, some of it's been a pretty hard time, eh? I, I, and I kind of go through these emotions of, of absolute terror, you know, how are we gonna pay the bills? Um, the world's falling apart. Um, then you go to grief. You know, I've lost someone very close. Well, we've lost quite a few people here in Spain. It's been terrible, the situation. So you start to lose friends and people around you. And you see a lot of other people. And then there's a kind of collective grief. And then you go through a phase of anger. And then I don't know about you, after being locked in now since, I think it was like the 2nd of March was the last time I went out of my village. Um, I just, I'm pretty bored. We're not allowed out of our houses other than to go to the shop, you know? So I, I, I have bad days. And then I have days that are fantastic. And I'm like, wow, we're on a path. And so there's this kind of roller coaster of, of emotions. But underneath this is a pretty sad uh, fact in that, you know, as you well know, our industry has kind of, has been annihilated. Tourism, the events, hospitality industry is this, probably the sector worst hit out of every sector. Um, and, you know, wherever you look at it, it's, you know, we have a disruption that we could never imagine. And so I'm interested to later for us to kind of explore how you are responding. You know, what are you doing? Some of you are kind of focused on kind of protecting people, i.e. Like visitors, the staff. Some of you really ensuring business survival and there's some great examples out here i saw sam and uh, sam and uh, uh, katrina on the call from ireland they did some great work there some of you have put in some great coordinating mechanisms to try and think how you kind of collectively reboot out of this but we're going to look at that 
But one thing I think you cannot say, really, if you kind of look into this, is that we didn't see this happening. Nature has been sending us messages that something disrupted is going to be happening on a long for a long term. I know I've been talking about this for 20 years. Um, just a few in, I think it was beginning of January, uh, the World Economic Forum puts out the global uh, risks report. And there you can see infectious diseases, one of the top 10. If you go back to every report for the last, I think at least 10 years, you'll see infectious diseases there. This is nothing that's not new. Um, uh, and so we can't say we didn't know, you know, we can't say that nature's not happy, whether it's um, the Antarctic with its record temperatures, 21 degrees uh, centigrade in, in Antarctic a few weeks ago, whether it's the fires, it's absolutely, you know, nature is sending and shouting out loudly that it's had enough. Kind of thing. But what we did underestimate is really the interconnectedness of life. This is an analysis from the World Economic Forum Risk Report, and it really shows how everything is connected. Um, but we kind of, they even put infectious diseases out here on the edge. We've kind of really realized that it should be in the middle because it affects everything, doesn't it, to a certain degree. But it raises a question for me, is how many other major things, such as climate change, are connected and, and present massive risk? And I really kind of realized that, you know, the average risk and resilience of most destinations is pretty poor, of our industry is pretty poor, and our thinking beyond that is pretty poor. But this interconnectedness goes even further, you know, we're seeing things like now that the cities that have most deaths are the cities with the worst pollution. So COVID-19 deaths are connected to air pollution. We're seeing that, you know, as everything has fallen apart, oil prices have crashed. They were minus $37 yesterday, a minus price. And so everything is happening. I, uh, Ed in our team, Ed Gillespie, calls this the great humbling. Everyone has kind of been forced to look at their belly button and kind of really humble down and really realize that, um, you know, we're elements of a big, big pie. So the question for me is, you know, is this the end of tourism as we know it? This was a report, uh, a great piece of work done by um, Visit Copenhagen, I think 2016 or 2015 it came out. But it really kind of, <laughs> it's even more relevant now. So what about the world that we know? You know, what will happen to it? Flight access is radically changed. Airlines are out of business. Flights will be mass flight costs will be massively more expensive. Hotels and restaurants are closed. How will they come back? Funding mechanisms of many of you has disappeared. How are you going to survive? What many DMOs are struggling with. Will clients demand? We've already seen big clients like Microsoft postponing their events until next, next June. Um, what about visitors? When will they come back? How will food service be done? And in Barcelona, the world of tapas has probably disappeared for a good long time. You're not going to be sharing food. How we interact. I had a birthday party a couple of days ago. We couldn't even blow the candles together. And what's clear is going to be a lot more visas. And then there's a kind of whole concept of disposable plastics, all that work that we've done to get rid of disposable plastics. Where does that sit? So there's a whole, whole series of questions. And I kind of wonder is, you know, are we in this moment? Is this a pause to the tourism we know? Or is it a reset? to everything that we've kind of learned to understand about the tourism events industry that we know and we love. What is true is we live in a world in a moment of true uncertainty. And McKinsey has a very interesting model with four levels of kind of uncertainty. So I invite you to have a look at this, this model. And many of us have been kind of working in a level one where we know the future, we expect what's gonna happen. But more and more, we're realizing that there are alternative futures and there's a range of futures. And in fact, we have no clue of what the future is. And so we have to change how we start to think about the future and start to really look at scenarios and use scenario planning as one of our key strategic tools. But what is clear, our world will be different. 
rules, policies will swing up and down. We will have issues around gatherings. There'll be travel restrictions. There'll be hygiene requirements. There'll be visa regulations. We will be protecting vulnerable groups. And things will change. Habits and behaviours will change. Most of us uh, are getting used to working from home. We will really be challenging our work-life balance. I don't know about you, but kind of buying everything online these days. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of happening top down and bottom up. It's a world where all our paradigms are changing. So if you kind of look to the future, you see that our scenarios for, for recovery are constantly changing. And what will they look like? At the moment, who knows? But it looks like, you know, most of us are in lockdown now. It looks pretty um, certain that to some degree, uh, we will start to open up markets already. Denmark, Germany, people like that are starting to, to open up a little bit and you will be allowed out. Um, but how long will that be? When will you be allowed more national travel? When will you be allowed more unrestricted travel? And what will that look like? Well, one thing is certain within these scenarios is that we're affected by the crisis, the economic crisis, the recession, the unemployment, xenophobia, populism. Um, and the kind of government's grabbing control to a certain degree. And this kind of reminded me, or Andy and our team reminded me of a, a really interesting quote from the father, one of the fathers of, of, of capitalism, Milton Friedman. And he said, only in a crisis, actual or perceived, produces real change. Only a crisis produces real change. When that crisis occur, the actions that are taken depend on the ideas that are lying around. That, I believe, is our basic function, to develop alternatives to existing policies, to keep them alive and available until the politically impossible becomes a political inevitable. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna throw out to you that a lot of our work in the in forthcoming months is to create those alternatives and to float them around and to really work on them so that we can take the political impossible that we couldn't have done years ago, try and make it the political inevitable for the way we run our destinations. So I think it's a time of massive opportunity. I think it's a time we all agree that extinction ends here. Uh, I don't want to be extinct. I don't want um, our race to disappear. So I think we have to do that. But it's a real time to rethink. It's a real time to look, question everything, to really think about why tourism, why events? What's the purpose? What are we trying to do? How do they serve society? How can they be a service to transforming society? How can we be of service to rebuilding our cities, our communities, the people around us, the people we love? How can we be of service of really addressing the sustainable development? Um, so I think it's time to redesign our industry. I think the old normal was degenerative. We've been working on trying to sustain the old normal and we're really realizing now, and it's great humbling, that that doesn't work. So the new normal has to be regenerative. The re new normal has to create a new regenerative normal where people, businesses, places, and the planet can flourish and thrive. So this is a lovely piece of work from Visit Flanders. And I think, you know, we all have to kind of do that work that Visit Flanders has been done. And some of you are on that journey. And I think those of you on the journey, especially, the, you know, the ones I work with, I know much more about, you're having a bunch. And so now it's really time to take the work that you've done and really start to rethink and reimagine that new future and integrate it into your reboot strategies, into how you plan to recover your industry. So that future has to be circular. We have to eliminate waste and plastic, um, single-use plastics. We have to obviously now make a future that's clean, safe, and healthy. We have to make it more inclusive and equitable. We've seen so many people suffer. We have to really drive in from innovation, but we have to move from innovation to transformation. And that transformation has to be within the planetary limits or the planetary boundaries. And so it's not just about recovering a sector in terms of the business and the economy. We have to really integrate social and environmental considerations in with that. So I like to think this is a time for us to pivot or the big pivot 
where it's time for us to really research, really understand and talk to people, uh, see what your citizens are thinking about the lack of tourism. Do they like it? Do they not like it? What do they miss? Then how you bring people together to reimagine your future. And with a team, with your stakeholders, you've got to democratically redesign the sector. Then you've got to reboot it. And the end has got to be about regeneration. So ladies and gentlemen, that's what I call the big pivot. That's kind of where we are focusing on at the moment. Um, but I think this journey is not going to be easy. We're on that roller coaster. We're going to have a high times and low times. Some people will say it's far too soon for you to start looking at that. But one thing I've seen is it's too soon until it's too late. So be bold, be brave, be kind, and be flexible. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was the, the first bit to kind of stimulate some thoughts. I hand you back over to Claudia and to uh, Noah. Thank you very much, Guy. Thank you. So um, we will now invite you um, to go into little breakout rooms um, to take these um, thoughts and inspirations and maybe also your own ideas and um, what we would uh, like to do. So basically, um, we really would like um, you um, to collectively in your own group that you will be getting together between four and five people in a group and to answer two questions um, you'll, you'll get more information on that but I just want to I was just want to um, share them out so um, first question will be how are you responding to the situation to the current situation and the second question would be um, what are your priorities and what is your plan of action um, in the coming month? So um, Noah just shared in the chat box, he just shared a, a, do, a, 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 Google, um, a Google Doc and you will find it broken down in groups. And now as you're going into your breakout rooms, um, we would ask you um, to, to get to one who, who makes the, the notes and, and, the, and sketches out what is, is, what is being discussed. And um, so afterwards, so you will have 13 minutes um, in your breakout room before you come all back. And we meet here in the, in the plenary. And then um, afterwards, we'll invite some three, four groups um, who would like to, um, to give a feedback um, on, on what, they, what has been discussed. That would be very nice. Uh, we will not have time for everyone, for every group. Um, but to have a little pulse uh, indication here. So, um, so please um, see the Google Docs at the right hand side. If you have any questions, we are here in the chats. And um, Noah, <clears throat> sorry, and Noah, if you can send out now everyone um, into, into, their, uh, into their groups and enjoy your conversation with each other. We'll see you in 13 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you. I, I hope you didn't have so many long ways from the from the breakout session to the keynote. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing a little bit this this uh, all of our experience. <laughs> so, um, what we would like um, you um, to invite you now is um, to have some shares of of some groups. Let's say three, four groups. And we will do this in very sharp timing. So every group um, or every speaker of the group has uh, exactly two minutes. And I will, I will be the time timer here for you. Um, but we really would like to invite different groups and come and just share a little bit about what you were talking about uh, in, in what you can do in, in, in two minutes. But to give, again, to have the pulse here um, from, from your own conversations. So, um, Noah, can you help to look? So, who is raising their hand who would like to give a star? Mm -hmm. See, timid. No, no one's raising their hand yet, I see. So, everyone, so if okay. someone wants to okay, share. Sam. Sam, would you like to? Yeah, I'll, I'll kick off. Um, okay, we, yeah. yeah, we got through about two, uh, 2.2 of our group because we thought we had longer. So, 
and um, you're going to really hear from the the uh, Dublin stroke Ireland and Bordeaux panels and I suppose what came through from Amelie and Bordeaux uh, myself in Ireland and I think probably Fiona was going to say the same in, in Ireland before uh, we get brought back into the plenary is all very similar um, it, up until very recently I think we were all looking at moving business to the third trimester of this year and now there's a strong realization that anything uh, within our industry is gone for this for 2020 and we, we have to start looking at 2021 um the recovery stage i think um again amelie set out three steps that they're looking at in bordeaux and i think sort of you know it's reflected certainly what we're looking at in Ireland is local tourism first, but again, that's not until 2021 um, with a step up then to national tourism. And the third step for them was looking at a, a wider welcome package for, for big congresses coming into Bordeaux. And I think we're all trying to take this time to, to work on those projects that we would love to do and never had the time for, but unfortunately now we do. Um, I think we're all very much focused on our own industry as well to try and try and support them in any way we can and, and work through their difficulties at this time. Uh, certainly in Ireland, what we have been doing as part of the National Tourism Authority is, is develop supports and try and generate some sort of cash flow back into our industry, um, which is incredibly difficult with no real end to, to where, uh, to where they, they may be able to generate their own cash flow in the future but some of the things that we've looked at are you know we had looked at IMEX and IBTM and other shows towards the end of the year which I don't think will go ahead now but when we hoped that they would uh, we had refunded all the the fees to our industry that they had already paid for that and we weren't going to charge it we had stated to them that we wouldn't be charging any membership fees this year um, and we had put a fund in place that whenever we were able to get back out and start selling again in the international markets, that you know, our industry won't have cash flow. Um, you know, DMCs and PCOs don't get cash flow until very close to events. Um, our hotels won't have had much cash flow at all uh, because they're all currently closed to tourism business. So we had put a fund in place to actually support our industry getting out to market um, to cover flights and accommodation for them to get the shows. So. Um, to get the, the Ireland message back out there again and I suppose get the industry, the, the guys that can sign the contracts out into the main markets. Um, Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Perfect. Because we would like to hear from some other groups as well. well and um, so anyone anyone would like to raise their hand? What, uh, Noah, can you maybe help me with looking because so many faces or raising your hands? So we would love to hear. Sam, oh uh, yeah, Evelyn, I can see your hand up. <laughs> Thank you. So just Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so in, in, in our group, we had um, uh, from Ireland, myself, Evelyn, representing the Cork um, Convention Bureau, and Mark from the Galway Convention Bureau. And um, uh, we, uh, I suppose, so we both had a similar story, and obviously what Sam says a lot of, mirrors a lot of what we were talking about in terms of the, the day to day um workload i suppose at the moment and how that has changed and um and um, then we had rochelle from from korea that was um giving us some very interesting insights as well as both about the the government and how they dealt with it we discussed a little bit at the start i suppose about our various governments and how from japan actually sorry sorry, sorry from, from, from japan sorry rochelle sorry apologies um sorry anna adora was from was from korea so we had um we had, uh, Rochelle was telling us um, some just, you know, some small initiatives, if I'm right, Rochelle, in, in, in terms of what the tourism body have done, even on a, you know, on a posters in various uh, locations and venues and different things, small little uh, initiatives that are kicking off and will probably become the norm. Um, and so I suppose rather than even all of us talking about bigger issues at this stage we were literally just kind of giving updates on our regions and our countries and just talking about I suppose we're all really at the stage of just very small initiatives really yet because I don't think any of us has the crystal ball to see what the what the 
you know, what is going to happen? And I suppose that's that's the kind of the crux of it, you know, that if there was one of us here who, who, who knew what was going to happen, we'd be uh, leading this this call. But it's, it's you know, small initiatives, if they're all that we can do and do properly at the moment, then that's okay, you know? And, and, and as Sam says, it delve into projects that we've always been putting on the long finger. So and it, was, it was actually lovely to, to hear from completely different countries, even if I got the countries wrong, sorry, Rochelle. But it was lovely to hear from people just, you know, completely outside of our, our radar as such. So that was great. So thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Evelyn. That is really, really nice. Yeah, that's what, well, to, to be able to share in so many different, um, um, yeah, really cont over continents. So maybe um, another, another last group that would like to, to share their, their insights or their feelings, what they, what they discussed in the group. Yeah, maybe something that inspired you, you know, what, what really spoke to you what, of, of something that another destination shared, for example. And I'm looking for, for hands that are raised, by the way. So, okay, Eileen. Hey. Hello there. Um, we had a lovely group, so it was nice to see everybody. We had Alenka from Ljubljana, Brigitte from Sweden, and Camille from Toulouse. And we were very similar in our discussions, apart from the fact that Brigitte was telling us and sharing with us that Sweden is not in lockdown as much as many of us are. So it was very interesting to hear that in Sweden, hotels are still open, they can close at weekends, there's a, a way of managing this transition, restaurants are still open. So it was uh, very interesting to hear that. And then there was a, a story, a very positive story, but slightly on hold for uh, Camille in Toulouse, is that they have a new venue opening. It was meant to open this June, but it sounds absolutely fantastic and incredibly sustainable. So there are still green shoots of, of positive things happening in our industry from our group. Mm, great, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Indeed, that was a total <laughs> uh, other direction. Yeah, totally. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, we are moving forward on our little journey here. And um, I would like to invite um, here a little Noah with a little with a little something that he will introduce. <laughs> well, I would like us all, after now having hit just after the halfway mark of this call, to stand up. So everyone, I want to not everybody stand, stand up, up please from their seats. And um, of course, if you have your headphones, I understand that you've got to stay close. Um, but what I would like everyone to do is now that we have ha halfway through the session, um, make a shape that represents how you're feeling now after having talked with so many other destinations and if this feels uncomfortable to you then just do more stretches like we did earlier in the morning so i will start i mean we, we all do it at the same time yeah um or i'll count to to five yeah and you just have to intuitively do a shape okay five four three two one and <laughs> wonderful wonderful okay <laughs> so now everyone back to your seats um guy is now going to take us into the second presentation of the session i wanted to share a little thing about what we're focusing on now at the gds index um and really this is to then to set this up then to throw the questions to you about what do you ex what, would, what are you looking for from us and how we can support you and how we use this wonderful community that we have created here to help each other. So that's a kind of a, a key thing that I'd like to explore. So um, our team is growing and we're probably actually gonna carry on growing. We're in a, a, a nice position. We, and we've, you know, some of these people you, you, you've met, some maybe you haven't, but we've, we've expanded the team into South America with Alejandra, um, and Alejandra is leading from Mexico, the kind of development there. Um, and we're really happy, we've got Lima joining into the program. We now have a very big collaboration with um, Eduardo Chayo, who's helping us develop throughout uh, LATAM. Um, Ed's joined the team, Ed's one of the kind of 
world's leading futurist on sustainability. He was the co-founder of Futera, and he's been helping us with projects in Copenhagen, with Ireland, with Sam, um, and now that's worked with some other projects with us. Um, Alex is in, in Vancouver, he's doing some great projects there. We started a, a really big project on Montreal, which we're also working with um, Geneviève Leclerc from Meet the Impact. So while, so while we're having kind of growing, not just our, our close team, it's our relationships, our collaborations, and it kind of really undermines this kind of core concept of what we're all about, which is extreme collaboration, because we think to change the world, we have to really change how we collaborate. So our purpose has evolved. So I think really our purpose today is about inspiring and engaging and enabling you guys to, to, to create destinations that are more regenerative, that are flourishing and more resilient um, and become just really fantastic places to visit, meet in and thrive in. So that's really kind of our purpose. Um, but we think that we're in this kind of place now, we think that our name actually doesn't really kind of work for us anymore, the Global Destination Sustainability Index. It's kind of just one bit of what we do. And you guys are asking for more. So we are thinking of a rebrand. This is where we were before the crisis. Um, we were gonna rebrand <laughs> on, um, on April the 1st to be the Global Destination Sustainability Movement. Um, we're now thinking that maybe sustainability is not the right word. We're kind of wondering if uh, we're the global destination regenerative movement or something like that. So I'm really interested to know your input on that because we don't, we're not sure if we found it yet. Um, and whether we keep to sustainability or we do what we're talking about, we do the next level up, which is regeneration. But we realized that we were about a movement, we're create, we're catalyzing a movement and we were facilitating a movement of which you guys are driving. Um, so we're kind of focused on, on kind of five key areas really our work is. So one is the actual index is the benchmarking. So we've developed new criteria. We're now reviewing our criteria to look at health, safety, resilience kind of things. And we've got a fantastic new platform that Noah has, has led the development of, and I'm super excited about it. It's, it's really world-class, this technology platform now. Um, but we don't know how to launch it. And so I'm gonna come on next to, to get your input on, on how, when, and, and how you would like to see that. The consulting area, we're doing a lot of work with, with various destinations, many of you on, on starting to really think about reboot strategies that rethink, redesign, regenerate process. And so from every from Copenhagen to Dublin to Geneva to, to other places, we're on a journey. Um, uh, but we've obviously been, like everyone, really having to change everything. And so we've been spending a lot of time uh, learning new online tools. So everything from just simple things to the meeting design of this to uh, Zoom groups through to some very, uh, elaborate uh, collaboration tools. Um, we're gonna to show you one of those today, but that it broke because so many millions of people around the world are, are using it. So there's a kind of a lesson too. So we come back to a simpler way that we're gonna use next. And we're doing some really good research uh, for IMEX. Uh, we've got a massive research project that's uh, evolving. Um, so yeah. Third thing is what we're really working on is, is the forum. And so Claudia is leading the development of the GDS forum. Um, and so it's a collaborative process. It's a design thinking process to create the forum, which is all about this on a, on a bigger global scale, how we really help you to share knowledge amongst each other. Um, we are planning that at the moment for June, but we're in a design process and we're at to focus now. We want destinations to get involved to help us co-create. So if you're interested in that, please come back to us. We're gonna send you out a request, an invitation, but please come back to us. We need a group, a kind of small, I'm not sure, we, I can't remember what we said, five or eight types of destinations to help us in the design process, in the design thinking process. Connected to that, we've come up with a very, uh, with a plan and a kind of roadmap for the academy, for the training. Um, and we have developed a kind of concept of a, a certificate training, regenerative destination management, which we plan to launch later this year. Um, so watch the space for that. 
And then lastly, the kind of thing that I kind of mentioned to you already is this kind of real fundamental pillar of collaboration. I mean, it's not even a pillar because it, it kind of goes across everything. So we're really extending partnerships with, um, with our existing partners, such as ICA uh, and MCI, but also with kind of partners such as EarthCheck, with the Travel Foundation, uh, with Meet Impact, with RouteMau, with, with lots of other organizations where we realize that each of us have different skills and together we can bring that together to really start this rethinking progress because that rethinking progress or process has to be systemic and systematic and requires a lot more thinking than we have on our own. So, um, yeah. So that's really a kind of an overview of the process. We're about to launch a new team a new uh, in Japan, which I forgot to add. Um, yeah, so exciting stuff there. But now it's really kind of coming back to you and about the GDS Index this year. So we're on this question, on this kind of quest to answer the question is, how do we do the GDS Index and its benchmarking this year? Um, we've been talking to many of you, we've had lots of conversations and you're telling us you have shifting priorities. Some of you are telling us we have no time. Some of you are telling us you have lots of time. Some of you say you don't have resources. Some of you are saying that you don't have any suppliers anymore. So how are you going to benchmark suppliers and hotels? Some of you are saying it'd be really hard to get through to the government um, and get their input. Um, and others are saying there may be a challenge of getting leadership support to do this. So we're kind of questioning because I think that's really what we should do. What should we do? So I'd like to throw out four scenarios and explain those about what we could do with the GDS index this year. And then we're going to break out into groups for you to kind of discuss that and provide some input. Um, and that will allow you to flush out some other thoughts as well. So kind of option one, which is, uh, you know, option um, I don't particularly like, but it's like, we just don't do the GDS index this year. We postpone to, to next year. To, uh, and we start early next year, January, boom, we go back into the, the benchmark. So this gives you lots of time to, to think uh, and, and focus on, on other priorities. Um, we would pivot um, and so use our time to really support you. So there'd be a lot more kind of consulting hours or support hours, more sessions, more training, things like that. We'd really invest in supporting you and providing some tools to help you reboot. Option two is focus. So rather than benchmarking all four areas, uh, we focus on just helping you to benchmark destination management, the DMO area. So we wouldn't really, I don't think we would do a public ranking because it's just one of the areas. Um, we would carry on adding new uh, criteria on resilience, recovery, health and safety. And the whole point there is really not just, it's not, I don't even know if it's benchmarking, it's kind of giving you the guidance of what is important and what helps, what could help you to create your recovery strategies. So again, it's a lot more support and, and almost like, tick, you know, rather than a, an evaluation, it's more like a tick sheet of what you could be doing um, and then giving you the input on assessing that and then giving you more input on what other destinations are doing. Option two. Option three is kind of you choose. You know, you decide you can either do a full benchmarking or you can do a partial benchmark or you do no benchmarking. We will support you whatever you choose. We won't do a public ranking, but we will do the assessment. Okay, so whatever you choose to do, we'll assess you, we'll give you input and we'll support you. Um, okay, option four is really kind of business as normal, it's, but it's slightly delayed. So we're carrying, we're doing that everything that we've done till now, but we'd kind of give you a little bit more time to do it. We'll add some more criteria, we'll add some more tools, we'll support you, um, but we just give you more time. So those are the four areas. Um, so pause, focus, YouTube, or delay. Um, and we have, we have different days we think different ones are the right way so we wanted decided to do this democratically um so noah would you like to kind of pick up on this add to anything i've missed and then kind of take us into the kind of collaborative exercise 
Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Guy. So as you can see, we have these four options here and I've created a Vima. I will now share the link with all of you in the chat. And similar to what we just did already with the breakout groups, I will again lot all of us into breakout groups of around four or five people. And then one of you or all of you could then please go access this link. Um, ideally only one representative so it doesn't overload the site. And then there will be four bubbles, which I will now share my screen so you get a sense of what it will look like. Um, so this is what Vima looks like once you have opened the link. And here we have these four separate bubbles. Yeah, pause, you choose, delayed and focus each of these four options. You can click on any of these. And then here you can add a comment. You don't need to create an account. You can be anonymous for this. And this is where we'd appreciate just your thoughts. You know, if this is the best, um, you can you can vote uh, like press a thumbs up if you like. But really, better would be um, the comments, so that we really understand your reasoning behind what would be good for you. Because it's such a complex topic, and the more input we have, the better decision we can make. But we also want the thumbs up, now and could get people to kind of vote on what they think is is okay most appropriate. So please do the thumbs up, and decide. And we just to do that by just clicking on the thumbs up, don't we? That's right, exactly. So you just click on it and there you go. That's a thumbs up. Um, all right, so all I will right. now- You'll uh, have, you'll have um, yeah, 10 minutes max, maybe probably less because- Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. you're, gonna, you're, you're breaking us out into groups to have a discussion around this, right, Noah? Yes, yes, exactly. I'll break you out into groups of four uh, or five. And if you have any comments throughout this, please write them in the chat in Zoom and I will reply to them there. Yeah, okay. And it'll take a little bit, by the way, uh, around a minute until we actually all arrive in our rooms. So the key thing is we want people to have a discussion to kind of really think about what they think is the best way forward. And you may have another scenario, you may have a totally different idea, or then you can uh, click on the, the top left, which is add new and add a new bubble. Um, so feel free to add other suggestions. So um, we have some more minutes left and we want to go direction wrapping up. There are still little things. So um, for your information, um, we will use the input from, um, from this session um, to inform the next, you know, the next actions and the next steps, also what we are going to take into our next um, virtual gathering. And we are planning to do the next virtual gathering in, a, in around two weeks time um, again. And only this time we will do it uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon um, because um, to also have the other part of the world also be, um, no, so they, that they can also participate. And, um, and then also you will hear about us, what Guy was mentioning before regarding um, inviting you or who is interested to, uh, to, to come and join us to some uh, session designs that we're having around the GDS forum that we are implementing the event design methodology here. And um, we will also create um, some summary of all of this, uh, what we talked today. And I would like to now quickly um, go and give over to Noah again. So who will come back with this one? Mm -hmm. with Actually, Guy shared this one. So I think, Guy, do you want to? I'm, uh, I'm just, um, I think it's, I think the feedback there from my group and uh, I can see from here is you choose has come up as the, as the top one. Um, but I think there's, there's input in all of this. So please don't take these scenarios as what we're going to do, because we're going to go through everything and then uh, assess and come back to you. And we're probably, we'll probably come back to you um, for, for one more round of consultation when we have this idea developed. So kind of a, a closer polling. So we're just going to work out how to do that and come back to you. Mm -hmm. But um, we will have the decision done what we're going to do by the 1st of May. That's our timeline. So, um, yeah, I know you want to do some more things about other ideas and stuff now. I'm not sure what, what the time we've got. What would you like to do? Well, the initial idea was before we close to think about it collaboratively, right? To think about what would be the next steps that you would like to see. What are the things that we potentially missed in this particular first session? 
that we should have in future ones. So the initial idea was to request you all to go back to Bima, to the same board, add a title as Guy is doing here. And in these, well, it's, it's the default category here, the next steps, just add a new idea that you have that you would like to see in the next session. So I don't know how you're all feeling. Maybe, let me see if I can, okay, I can't really see everyone, unfortunately, but maybe I could give a, get a thumbs up from the people that would still be able and like to do that. Just a thumbs up to the, to the screen like this. Yeah. Okay, I see enough thumbs up. So um, I will, in the chat, share the link again in case anyone has misplaced it. If you still have the, file, the, the page open, please open it and um, add your ideas. Now, half of what we're trying to do also is to show you new tools. This is what we want to do with this kind of series of, of sessions that we're going to do for everyone to be able to play with new tools and work out what works for you. Vima is a tool that we like. Um, it's not the best, but it's very simple. Um, and so it works for kind of this idea collaboration. So yeah, you just come in and knew what you'd like to see, and then you can kind of drag an idea into a next step. So, you know, I drag it into next steps. So then I can just click on next steps. Because it's a category just, yeah. So yeah, exactly. It'll just be organized like that. If you'd like to see, so there's a couple here. Sometimes you need to refresh. So sometimes you just need to go to the application, just hit it like that. Um, ideas pop up. So, uh, all right, another one, discussion, recovery scenarios. And I've set a three minutes timer for this. So after that, we'll close and you can add future ideas afterwards also. And if you don't have an idea to add, you can just go in and vote. You can just go and say, yeah, I think this would be really good. So that's a... Yeah. Make sure. Nine ideas. Okay, so yeah. sounds like next next time we may involve you a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. If some of you present something. Yeah, and so you know, if you'd like to present something, I think it's great. I think mean, Sam touched on it, but I th and 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 Evelyn, but I think response in Ireland is fantastic, and I think there's there's the way that's packaged. So I think that could be a, a good thing. Um, I don't think we got anyone from Copenhagen, but co what Copenhagen is doing is really interesting really doing some great scenario work and we're working quite a lot on that kind of scenario planning and, and, and visioning and, and what the process is. So I think that could be quite interesting to share. Um, uh, but maybe, you know, other of you have got something great that you're working on. So please, please, you know, I need to suggest it here or write us an email uh, directly about what you'd like to, if you've got something to share or a point that you'd like to discuss. Yeah, we like good news stories. I think. <laughs> um, interesting global green campaign. I mean, uh, I think we're definitely going to have. I'm, I'm not sure about you, but I see this kind of two worlds. Half the world are kind of things so where the future has to be sustainable, and the other half of people say, "No, we we don't have time for that anymore." Mm. So I feel that we kind of have to kind of focus on. Um, I'm reminding people why this is important. So how we do that is another good thing to be explored. Mm -hmm. Well, great. I think yeah, that's well, a good start. I think uh, we have three minutes left. So I'd like to hand over to Claudia to mm -hmm. close the session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go for the circle. <laughs> yeah, OK. So actually, Guy, if you would yes thank you very much so how is everybody feeling let's do it like this good medium not so good if we can just give a pulse from all of you please into the sea into the to have a, an idea <laughs> that is great i love the energy from olivia <laughs> 
all is <laughs> and here Rebecca with her thumbs up very good very very yellow very good nice. so everyone thank you so much for coming coming today into the in, in into into our little conference into our virtual imaginative uh, conference and um we have the feeling that it was really good to come together, share in groups as well, and as we go, and also as everybody, also we are on the learning curve and how how to live more virtual, become more virtual, also with you all together. So as we go along, we continue experimenting, we continue adding and expanding. So. Um, we definitely um, are very appreciative about your ideas and help support to go along this journey and, and for all of us um, to become better and um, to, to be able to, to give um, good, good things for, for, for our destination and places. And so, um, because as the, or many of us are starting the day, basically, we are going into midday and some of you, of course, are ending the day, but anyway, so in any case, we are going somewhere now. So again, I would ask you to stand up, all of us stand up. And so imagine we are all in that common keynote, a keynote session room. And uh, for us here in Europe, for example, we simply need to go now, like, you know, we'll go into the break and those are in Asia going somewhere else. So just imagine you're walking. So we are just walking now. So everybody, thank you so much for spending time with us. We love to having you with us. And now just imagine in your mind, you're walking to, to, to your private room now or to get something to drink or to meet someone. This is how you imagine it. And we look forward to seeing you again in, um, in two weeks who can and ever can join. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, I'm going, I'm going, ciao. <laughs> thank you. Bye, thanks. Bye. thanks. Till next time.